Well, I have been polishing like crazy on both sides and I have got the starboard side just about done. Now you can see where I've kind of stopped on that right there and then the rest of this is where I've sanded and it just needs to be polished. However, I've got a more pressing issue. Today when I was 60 miles away from the shop, the van blew the radiator. So that's what I get to fix today. It seems that right there where the radiator goes across, it's split. Just split it wide open and boy I tell you it sprayed stuff everywhere all over the place. So I had to drive 60 miles back stopping every so often and pouring water into the coolant just to get me through. So I went to AutoZone and got me a new radiator to the tune of 200 bucks. And here's something that's kind of funny is that that radiator in my town was $250. The same AutoZone one town over, which is not quite as nice and is kind of known for, uh, you know, the people don't have as much money, uh, was, two, was $50 less. So in my town, $250, and I paid $192.88 in one town over by driving. And when the bad part is, is the people in my town, same AutoZone, would not match their AutoZone prices. They said, well, it goes by geographic area. I said, okay, so we live in a, a nicer area. We have to pay more. He goes, well, guess. So anyway, that's what I get to do. So I'm gonna start dismantling this and uh, I'll walk you through it as I do it. And this is one of the first radiators that I've done that does not have um, a fill cap on it. It actually has a little reservoir over here. So, you know, I guess you just fill over here and run it over. I guess I'll read the owner's manual and see what it says. All right, so I got a lot of the stuff out of the way, and there you go, right there. A split in this plastic composite. Now, why they don't you still use metal, I don't know. It's cost-cutting cost measures, that's what it is. Well, that wasn't too bad. It took me about 20 minutes to get the old one out, get everything drained and everything loosened up, move the radiator shroud back, and it slipped right on out. So now I just got to put that guy back in. Basically, it has two connections at the bottom for the transmission cooler to coolant to run through, which you got to make sure you recheck your transmission fluid, uh, cool, uh, transmission fluid once this is all said and done. Then I've got one lower radiator hose, and I've got one upper radiator hose, and I've checked these hoses and they're in really, really good shape. No cracking or anything like that. I think the previous owner replaced those fairly recently. So. I kind of debated on whether or not to do the water pump before I got this out, but to be honest with you, I got the radiator out so easy. The water pump goes, I'll deal with it then. Well, another 20 minutes later, and it's all back together. And I've just got to fire it up and start adding uh, antifreeze and water into 50 50 mix. And uh, should be all finished. As you can see, I like doing stuff myself. Uh, two reasons I'm cheap, and I don't trust anybody else. Uh, I, I've been taken by mechanics in years past and you know what I just much rather do it myself especially you know knowing that it's a job well done and it, uh, you did it yourself prime example is my new fence that I did last spring I read up on the internet and taught myself how to do the fence now there is the uh, the boat uh, my old Explorer that I completely fixed the wreck on and my shower so Nothing I won't tackle, and I enjoy it. So, let's hope this works now. Well, it's done, in, done with no leaks. It's running great. Took about uh, four gallons to uh, refill everything in the van, but brought up to operating temperature, it sucked it all down. Worked pretty good. So, it took me about an hmm, hour and a half, and that was with a couple interruptions. Wasn't too bad, though.